Hello my rubber hearts. Today we are diving into a topic that might just keep you up at night. The looming threat of a rubber shortage, or as I like to call it, the rubber apocalypse. Now I know what you're thinking. How bad could a rubber shortage really be? Well, let me tell you. It's a scenario straight out of a doomsday prepper's wildest dreams. Imagine a world where the very fabric of our society starts to unravel, all because we ran out of that stretchy, bouncy and also versatile material we call rubber. So buckle up, figuratively, since we might not have tires for long. And let's dive into the dystopian depths of a potential rubber shortage. Trust me. By the end of this, you'll be hoarding rubber bands like they're gold nuggets. It all started with the COVID-19 pandemic, which sent supply chains into a tailspin unlike anything we've seen in modern history. Suddenly, the delicate balance that kept rubber flowing from the far-flung corners of the world was disrupted, and the ripple effects were felt across industry like a tidal wave crashing into a rubber dinghy. From auto manufacturers to medical suppliers, everyone was scrambling to get their hands on this precious commodity. It was like a game of musical chairs, but instead of fighting over seats, we were fighting over rubber, and nobody wanted to be left standing when the music stopped. Factories ground to a halt, assembly lines fell silent, and the once steady flow of rubber products slowed to a trickle. It was a logistical nightmare that had executives and supply chain managers tearing their hair out. But that's not the only factor contributing to the rubber shortage. You see, even before the pandemic threw wrench into the works, the global natural rubber market was already valued at a staggering 40 billions back in 2020. And demand? Well, let's just say it's been on a one-way trip to the stratosphere. One market analysis even predicts that by 2026, the natural rubber market could be worth a whopping 68.5 billion. That's more money than some small countries' GDPs. And we are talking about a commodity that, at its core, is derived from the sap of a tree. But why is demand for natural rubber skyrocketing, you ask? Well, my dear rubber hearts, it's because this versatile material is woven into the very fabric of modern civilization. Anytime you go anywhere, by plane, car, or even by foot, you're using rubber. Even the protective equipment we've all become so familiar with during the pandemic, those rubber gloves and elastic bands in masks, rely on this stretchy superhero material. In fact, rubber is used in over 40,000 commercial products, and in some cases, like airplane tires, it simply cannot be swapped for the synthetic alternatives. We are talking about the material that's as essential to our way of life as oxygen itself. Well, maybe not quite that essential, but you get the idea. But here's the kicker. The producers of natural rubber, those hardy souls responsible for keeping our rubber hungry world supplied, are fighting a war on multiple fronts. They are battling drought, deluge and disease all in a desperate attempt to keep the sap flowing and the supply chains churning. Before the pandemic, the rubber industry was already facing challenges that would make even the bravest farmer break out in a cold sweat. In the US, for example, most of the natural rubber used is imported from elsewhere, with the country shelling out a whopping 2.5 billion just in 2021 to satisfy its rubber appetite. And let's not forget about China the behemoth of manufacturing, which imported a staggering 3.8 billion worth of natural rubber in the same year. That's enough rubber to make a life-size replica of the Great Wall, with a few spare tires left over for good measure. But where does all this rubber come from, you ask? Well, buckle up, because it's a wild ride that takes us deep into the heart of Southeast Asia, where a whopping 90% of the world's natural rubber is produced. And here's the real kicker. Most of this rubber is grown and harvested not by massive corporate plantations, but by independent farmers called smallholders. 
These hardy souls have plots of land ranging from just 1 to 2 hectares. That's about the size of 1 to 2 football fields. Imagine tending to your own little patch of rubber trees, day in and day out, battling the elements and fending off disease that threaten to wipe out the entire crop and livelihood in one fell swoop. Like a real life game of rubber tree valley, but with a far higher stakes. And speaking of disease, let's talk about the real villain in this story, the dreaded South American leaf blight, also known as SALB. This fungal disease caused by the Ascomyceti microcyclus ulei has effectively inhabited commercial scale natural rubber production in the entire South and Central American regions. It's like a scene straight out of a horror movie, with once lush rubber plantations reduced to withered, lifeless husks, their leaves shriveled, their trunks scarred by the relentless onslaught of this fungal foe. But SALB isn't the only enemy these smallholders face. Curveballs left and right, with droughts and deluge wreaking havoc on these small scale operations. Like Mother Nature herself is conspiring against our rubber supply, testing the resilience of these farmers to the very limit. Now, you might be thinking, surely we can just switch to synthetic rubber, right? Isn't that the solution to this impending crisis? Well, not so fast. While the synthetic alternatives do exist, they are not the perfect solution. Far from it, in fact. For starters, the production of synthetic rubber often relies on fossil fuels, which means we'd be trading one environmental concern for another. It's like trying to put out the fire by dousing it with gasoline. Sure, the flames might go out for a bit, but you're just setting yourself up for an even bigger blaze down the line. And let's not forget that many applications, from aircraft tires to surgical gloves, simply demand the unique properties of natural rubber. It's like trying to replace a finely tuned violin with a rusty trombone. Sure, they're both instruments, but the end result is going to be, well, let's just say it won't be music to anyone's ears. So, what's the solution to this impending rubber crisis? Well, that's a question that has scientists policymakers and industry experts scratching their heads. Some are looking into developing more disease-resistant rubber trees varieties, using cutting-edge biotechnology to engineer plants that can withstand the onslaught of fungi and other pathogens. It's like creating a botanical superhero with the power to shrug off even the mightiest of microscopic foes. Others are exploring ways to boost productivity on existing plantations, using advanced agricultural techniques and sustainable farming practices to squeeze every last drop of sap from these precious rubber trees. There's even talk of creating more sustainable and eco-friendly synthetic rubber alternatives, using renewable resources like plant-based materials or even recycled rubber itself, it's like alchemy for the modern age, turning trash into treasure, or in this case, turning trash into tires. At the end of the day, the looming rubber shortage is a stark reminder of just how interconnected and interdependent our world has become. Who would have thought that something as seemingly innocuous as a rubber tree could hold the fate of modern civilization in its sappy grasp? But fear not, rubber hearts, for where there is a will, there is a way. And if there is one thing humanity has proven time and time again, it's our ability to adapt and overcome even the most daunting challenges. So let's keep our fingers crossed and our rubber boots, just in case, as we navigate this potential rubber apocalypse. Because in a world where rubber is king, we cannot afford to let the throne go empty. Who knows, maybe this crisis will spark a renaissance in rubber innovation, with brilliant minds from around the globe coming together to find creative solutions. Perhaps we'll see the rise of a new generation of rubber revolutionaries, dedicated to keeping our rubber-hungry world supplied and sustainable. Just maybe.
this whole rubber apocalypse thing is just a bit of a hyperbole and we'll muddle through like we always do finding a way to keep the rubber flowing and the wheels turning both literally and figuratively either way one thing is certain the world's love affair with rubber is far from over this bouncy stretchy material has become woven into the very fabric of our existence and we are not giving it up without a fight so until next time, stay stretchy my friends and remember, when the going gets tough, keep that rubber spirit alive and who knows, maybe you'll be part of the solution that save us from the dreaded rubber apocalypse. And for the love of all that stretchy, start stockpiling those rubber bands, you never know when you might need them. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next episode.